I'm David Brown. I'm director of public history at Leo Beck Institute. And uh, I'm going to visit our archivist, Michael Simonson, who's prepared something, um, an artifact for us to look so at. So I understand you picked up an object related to the Holocaust. I did. Show I did. Video. It is, um, we were trying to think of something symbolic from the collections, as you know. Mm -hmm. And um, we chose this bracelet. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, yeah, take get a close up for sure. So what is this? So what this is, um, is this is a charm bracelet for good luck, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. And it's made by um, a prisoner um, for a while. She was in Auschwitz named Lisa Lota Zomerfeld. And this charm bracelet is her prison number. Um, zero two two eight one, a star of David and a four leaf clover. And um, the story of Lisa Lotta, very quickly, um, is she was from Germany. Her family fled to Holland. And then they were um, arrested and sent to Wut, which was a transit camp, mm -hmm. uh, much like Westerbork um, in the Netherlands. Her parents from there were sent to the death camps, but she stayed working for the Phillips Company. Uh, many hundreds of Jewish women worked for the Phillips Company where they made parts for radios and Nazi aircraft. And so um, they were considered somewhat essential workers, which protected them a while from being deported to Auschwitz and Sobibor, the two death camps the Dutch Jews were sent to. However, in June of 1944, um, it was after she'd been there for a, a, you know, a good year, um, it was decided to um, send all the Jewish women of Phillips away. So they were sent, um, they were deported, sent by cattle car to the Auschwitz death camp. Um, when they got there, however, word had preceded them that they were skilled workers that they had been trained to do this very technical work with radios and wiring. Um, so when they arrived, there was no selection. The women were all taken directly into the camp and registered. But though they had been rescued for this moment, the plan was to build a camp in another part of Silesia that would be, in a sense, just for the women who worked for the Phillips Commando, as it was called. But for the month they had to wait in Auschwitz, while this camp was being completed for them, they suffered brutal conditions, um, uh, Nazi brutality, starvation, disease, selections, uh, heavy work building roads, moving bricks. Uh, many of them did not survive it. Uh, Lisa Lota luckily was one who did. And then they were um, transferred out of Auschwitz after about a month there in Birkenau. Uh, they were um, uh, again loaded on freight cars and taken out and taken to this new camp called Reichenbach. Um, and in Reichenbach, they did the same work they had done in Netherlands, working with um, uh, radios for Nazi aircraft and Nazi machinery and other kinds of wiring work. So is that why yes. she had the materials to make this bracelet? Right, yes. In Reichenbach, they had a little bit more access to, to food, to, to things they could use. I know at Yad Vashem, there's another woman in the Phillips Commando who made a comb, so a very practical thing. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Lota. Out of the same kinds of materials? Out of the same kinds of material, wire that they took from their work site. So do you think that this was out. created illicitly? Yes. And secretly? Yes, So I believe so. Yeah. I, so I possessing something like this mm -hmm. would have been an offense that, that they could have been punished for? It certainly could have, yes, because of the wire stealing. Right. So, yeah. And how did this come to the Leo Beck Institute? Lisa Lota Sommerfeld herself, a number of years ago, it seems, came and she donated this to us. She has since passed away. I'd love to ask her more about this. Mm -hmm. And um, when we received this material, uh, it was unclear exactly where she made it. Um, but I think that it was probably made in Reichenbach.
again, where conditions were a little better, it wouldn't have really been so possible in, in Birkenau. Right. But it was possible in Reichenbach to, to do something like this, to have a few things to to kind of there was also better a little bit better access to food and so on where in Birkenau that had been largely impossible and um you mentioned that Lisa Lotto Sommerfeld survived and came to New York how did she she um, did so before the war and I actually have a picture of her because I knew you were coming but I don't know how it'll look on here but we can here, try I'll it focus down and we'll take a that's look. when she was young and still living in Berlin she um had a boyfriend named Hans Altenberg. And um, Hans Alt Altenberg, in the end, he, to leave the country, he took a job on a ship. And when he, when they reached Dominican Republic, he got off and just stayed. She managed to find out where Hans was and wrote him. And he wrote back. And the relationship that had been halted by the war continued. And a few years after the liberation, she um, moved, she, she went to the Dominican Republic and they married. And from there, they moved up here, um, I can't say exactly where, but New York, the New York area, mm -hmm. and uh, lived the rest of their lives here. And did she donate other materials to the Leo Beck she Institute? Did. She did, she donated um, some books and she donated some correspondence. Um, you know, there's little, from the actual pre-war or Holocaust period um, for obvious reasons. But she did donate some material that had survived the war. Uh, most of it though is stuff from after the war. Uh, I believe like her feelings about about having survived and being in Amsterdam and the things loss that she of had written in memoirs and I think so, yes. I can't sort of I can't say I'm that familiar with it. So I'm hesitant to talk too much about it. Okay. But you know, yeah. but uh, but it is. I believe it's digitized, so people are welcome to take a look for, look at it in our online catalog. So the last question: mm -hmm. um, How typical is this kind of thing for our collections? Is this? Would you say this is something extraordinary? I mean, I, yeah. I know the answer to this. Right? Yes, yeah. it is extraordinary. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Why? Like it's it's shocking actually when you think about its history. We do have some other materials like this, however, but it was interesting. They were also donated largely by Lisa Lotus Sommerfeld. Oh. She also gave us a spoon that she had used, I assume, in Reichenbach and carried with her. Um, I think there is also another piece of silverware, just these kind of small things. This is the, the, the most... Uh, uh, the most interesting because it shows, of course, creativity and, and, and her making something. And in a way, I guess it can also be seen as an act of resistance. You know, you're, you've got, you're going through these terrible things. You don't think you're going to survive. I'm sure no one there, even in the Reichenbach, really thought they were going to survive this. And so it was a way to somehow claim um, some kind of dignity and humanity, making and wearing something like this, saying, I'm still a person. And, um, yeah. and so on. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.